Okay, so Grid 2019. This is going to be my review. You see at the top right, I'm level 7. I have VIP. That is because the guys over at Codemasters were nice enough to hook me up with the Ultimate Edition of the game. And I want you guys to know that that in no way is going to alter my review. I'm going to be brutally honest because I'll tell you straight up right now, I don't like this game in the slightest. There's a couple of features that are really nice. Other than that, it's... It's not worth its price tag. It's on Xbox, it's £55 for standard, £75 for Ultimate Edition. It is not worth that much at all. You literally get 12 different tracks to choose from, and they're going to add more in the future, but that's all part as paid DLC. As you'll see here, you literally just have a handful of cars that you can choose from. I believe there's like 70 or something in the game. For the first three touring events in the game, you have a choice of four different cars, that all cost around 30,000 credits. On your fourth event, you're forced to buy another car, this one ranging between 105 and 112,000 credits. I mean, granted, as you progress through the events, you do start earning more per race, but I think it's a little bit on the expensive side for some of these cars. You have a Nemesis feature in this game, and it's a good concept, but I think it's been poorly developed, poorly executed, just because you basically annoy other racers. You bump into them, they become your nemesis. They will do everything in their power to spin you out. They're going to be more aggressive. The thing I don't like about it, because it is a good feature, but I don't like how if you're in a full round event and you make someone your nemesis, literally next race, that resets and they're no longer angry with you. So every single race, you're creating a new nemesis and you can have multiple in the same race. But I just think that moods shouldn't instantly reset at the end of a race like they should carry on through the rounds there could have been more depth added into the feature but a good part of it is the fact you can also turn your teammate into your nemesis and when you do that they'll act the same as other drivers but they will also ignore instructions if you're given an aggressive like an attacking instruction you're going to get feedback saying they completely ignored you they will not listen to what you have to tell them you have different libraries in the game which is a cool idea but upon looking at them, you have rarities. You've got rare, it goes to epic, and then you go all the way up to legendary. These are supposed to award you an XP bonus or something like that when you are racing. But there is literally no indication that you're being given extra XP, bonus XP. It doesn't tell you anything like that. There's In this game in general, there is a lot of depth that is lacking. Some of the features could have been... Like, they could have had extra things expanded on, but it just feels as though it's lacking in a lot of departments. The graphics are pretty decent for a racing game, but the game in general looks nice. Although, when you first load this game up for the very first time, you'll have, like, cutscenes that enter you into, like, intro races. And them cutscenes, at times, they run smooth, but sometimes towards the end, or there'll just be a random part, and I tried on both PC and Xbox. And these cutscenes haven't been rendered properly. Like, they just seem to lag. Like, there's a little bit of jolting in some of them. Like, the sound goes all distorted and things like that. You can actually purchase different teammates to race alongside you. Their sign-in fees aren't too much on the expensive side. Like, I think they're fairly balanced for the sign-in fees. The only problems with this feature is when you buy a new teammate, the other one that you were currently using. So, if I was to purchase... Let's just say I get Nick Whistle, that's the beginning, like your very first teammate. If I was to buy him, Harper goes back into this list, so I lose the money I've paid, like the signing fee, I lose that. You're locked to having one teammate at a time, and if you buy a new one, you don't like them, you don't get on with them, they're not aggressive enough, they're not passive enough, then you have to buy your previous one again. Not only that, but Nick Whittle, the one you start with, takes 30% of your racing earnings, so if you're earning 10,000 for a race, you're only going to get 7,000 because 3,000 disappears, goes to Nick. And not only that, some of them can't actually race to save their lives. And then there's other teammates, for example, with Nick and Harper. Nick is trash. Like, Nick doesn't know how to race. Yet Nick is taking a 30% race fee, whereas Harper is the better driver out of the two, from my experience, and Harper takes 10% less. Cars don't have stats of acceleration, torque, brake horsepower, anything like that at all. You can literally just see the power, the weight, and the drive type, whether it's all-wheel, 
or rear wheel, like whatever drive types, that's all you can see. Power, weight, drive type. One thing I do like about this is different cars will feel different. They'll have different handling types. Some of them are going to be more skiddy around corners. Some of them are going to grip better. Some might grip too much and it'll be harder to turn. And I do like that because it gives it more of a realistic feeling than other racing games. Watch this rear view mirror. This is for a 2019 racing game. It's running at like 10 FPS. It literally looks like a B-grade version of OutRun or something like that as you're watching the cars behind you. Look at how choppy it is. Like, it's such a bad feature. And this is a racing game. A rear view mirror should be rendered properly. It should, it should work the same as the racing game does. So if you're playing a 60 FPS, that rear view mirror should be running a 60 FPS. And you can see, like, it's constantly like that. There's never a time where that looks smoother. And I think that's horrible for a racing game. All right, requesting to push. Okay, push confirmed. You would have heard there that I gave the instruction for my teammate to push, to start attacking. And I mean, if you're sitting there and you're playing this to try and be as realistic as possible, you would possibly select other choices. But from my experience, whether your teammate is in first place or last, there is no need for any of the instructions besides attacking. If they're out in front and you set them to attacking, they're just going to put pedals to the metal. They're going to slam ahead. Like, they'll go a, a good few hundred yards ahead. I've had times where my teammates popped off the mini-map. And then when they're at the back, you set them to attack. And they just push positions. Like, there's no need for any other instruction. Taking a look at this list on screen of the career events, because this game is built up with free play, multiplayer, and career Although I did have the Ultimate Edition, so I got early access to it from the 8th, I couldn't find anyone else playing this Ultimate Edition. So multiplayer didn't work for me with matchmaking. I tried it once, so bear in mind like that could work better than my experience. But free play is boring unless you've got friends playing. The career. It consists of 13 main events in each class. Then you get a showdown. So basically there's 14 events in each of these different racing categories. Times that by 5, that's 70 events. You don't even need to do all of these to unlock the Grid World Series, which is like the main final event of the game. Once you've done the Grid World Series, you've essentially completed the game. All you have to do is win 4 showdowns. So you go 14, 28, you go up to 56. You do 56 events, like they consist of between 1 and maybe 4 rounds per event, but you just do 56 and you can take part in the Grid World Series. You also have the Invitational, which has a few more races, but the point in me saying this is there is going to be 99 new career events coming through the Season Pass with 12 new cars, and that is more career events than the entire base game, all crammed into paid DLC. There are 12 tracks that add in more, there's, say there's 70 cars that add in more. Like, all this stuff, it just feels as though this is a half-assed game, they're making people pay for extra content, just to release a full game, because 12 tracks for a racing game, when you have all these racing tracks across the world, seems lazy. I understand, like, this is supposedly a reboot. I've said it looks just like a remaster of one of the old Grid games, but I've had people telling me, no, there's a lot, new, like, a lot of new features. It's a completely different game. It doesn't feel like it. And especially when they're charging £55 for the base game, an extra £20 for the season pass, it just feels as though you have to buy that season pass to actually get any enjoyment out of this game at all. And that's an extra £20, because once you've done the 56 events in the Gridwell series, there's no point playing the career. Unless you want to gold every single race, that's fair enough. That would be something I would do if I was heavily interested in this game. But even with that, once you've done this career, there's nothing else to do, and they're charging a full 55 quid for this game. I honestly don't know how IGN have rated this an 8 out of 10, especially with past ratings they've given for games, and they give this an 8. I don't know where their logic's coming from with that. But again, like, no hate to the developers. They're just making a game, and I get they need to make their money and stuff like that. There's no microtransactions in this game at all. All the libraries with the different rarities you just earn through doing, like, career milestones and reaching different accomplishments and getting accolades and things like that. But I personally rate this game a 4 out of 10. The reason I'm giving it a 4 is because the gameplay is smooth, the graphics are nice, 
There are weather effects and there's day and night races. They're done well. The rain will change how your car grips on the track. So there are some good features. But if I was to give this game a price range, I would say it's not worth any more than £20 for the base edition. And then if you want the season pass, you pay an extra £10. So for the ultimate edition, it's 100% not worth £75. Even if you're a massive hardcore grid fan, it is not worth 75 quid. 30 out of push, in my opinion, that's for the Ultimate Edition, 20 for base. That's all I think it's worth, my personal opinion. And as always, get discussions going in the comments and stuff because I like to hear your feedback. To wrap it all up and like basically just put like the last words in of the review, it doesn't feel fun. Literally, after I completed the first like four or five events, I was begging for it to end. It's a race game. There's there's never a, like really a lot in these, unless you're playing Forza Horizon where you've got exploration and different things you can do. They say they've developed this game for fun. To me, this game isn't fun. It's the same thing literally over and over again from the very first event. There's not much that changes. As I said, there's 12 tracks in the entire game. You are forced to do each race consecutively. So if you're doing a full round event, you have to do all four of those. But if a full round event lasts 10 minutes, there is an event in this that's one round and all they've done is just chucked extra laps into the race just to build up the time it takes. It was a four mile race and they put four laps on it. So that one race took me nine minutes to complete. Whereas I can get two round events done in like six, seven minutes. So I don't like the way they've done that. It just seems a little bit lazy on the development side. And after I spent nine minutes on that track, I never want to go back there. So that leaves me with 11 tracks that I'm wanting to play on. So I don't know. That's going to end my review there. I, I don't think I've been too critical and harsh towards the developers. I've, I feel that it's fair what I've said. Like, the game is good in general. Like, the gameplay is smooth, the racing. It can be fun, but it gets daunting and tedious and boring after a few races. For me personally, some of you might enjoy the idea of having to go through all the different events and stuff like that. But I rate it a 4 out of 10. I'm saying it's definitely not worth its price tag. Nowhere near its price tag. To me, it's ridiculous that they're even thinking of charging that, let alone actually putting that price tag in place. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. That's going to do it for this review. Thank you for watching.